just, you know, first, you know, say that um, good afternoon for everyone that's with us today. Uh, this is a special AMOA presentation by Dr. Marquez. And um, some of you heard that she decided uh, to retire from UEB. She started at UEB in 1993 and from there has really went up the rank and uh, led a lot of um, 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 initiatives and also was responsible to supervise several things in the Department of Pathology. Uh, and um, she enjoyed working as an academician, doing research, administration, clinical work and giving lectures. And one of the things that I think she really enjoyed because she has been a great advocate for women in medicine and science. And um, we all like went to her and she's been a great model for all of us here as women in medical science uh, at UAB. And she um, has done an excellent job with the um, and what chapter really revived it and give it all. And um, today she's going to talk about some of the accomplishments, but no matter how much, I don't know how you're going to present that, but I am sure the benefits and the creativity that she put in there to really um, even selecting the topics, you know, like the, uh, and also we had a, a difficult time through COVID but the, um, the attendance at MWA and all of us benefited from your leadership at MWA and we wanna really, really thank you. And um, again, I'm just gonna put like, I know uh, Marissa, you're a very, very, very hard um, person to follow, but we are looking for a leader to follow, um, to be the president of AMOA. And um, if you are interested, let us know. So with that, I don't wanna take any more time. And Marissa is gonna talk to us today about what she accomplished. And you know, like she really put a lot of aspiration in that role, she didn't take it lightly. So uh, again, uh, this is a special um, session for AMOA and we're looking forward to your talk, Marissa. Thank you so much. Can you hear me? Can everybody hear me well? Okay. Well, thank you so much for this introduction, Dr. Fuad. It's been my honor and pleasure to do this. And uh, as you said, we still need someone to take this, uh, this role. And uh, throughout this uh, hour, hopefully a little less than an hour, I'm going to share how we, I put these sessions together. So uh, anybody can, can, can follow that with, uh, with some, of, uh, some ideas that uh, I would like to share. And I appreciate seeing several people that helped me along the way. A, a lot of them are in this um, session and I understand how busy everybody is. So thank you for, uh, th thank you for taking time uh, to, to join the Zoom. Uh, let, me move, let me see it, let me move my slide. First and foremost, I want to acknowledge the people behind the scenes. More recently, Jessica Snyder and Mary Hiller helped me uh, put the sessions together. Everyone that spoke at them, at them know how much they uh, contributed by putting the beautiful ads together. They would remind me that there was a session coming on. Uh, and uh, I cannot thank them enough. Uh, when uh, Sometimes I had an idea and I would discuss with them and they would make it a lot better. So uh, it's also very fitting that the person that is thanking them is my grandbaby. Uh, Hugo is a very important uh, uh, part of the reason I decided to retire after 25 years in the faculty. I think it's time to give Hugo and his parents, my son and his, and his wife, who are academicians and young faculty members, the, 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 the support that they need in, in their, in their um, journey. I think that I had a, a wonderful ride. I had incredible opportunities and I want them to have the same. And um, I'm going to have more time to enjoy Hugo. The only difficulty is that they live in Los Angeles, but that too is a reason to stop working at UAB because then I can travel there more freely. 
as they need my support uh, to help watch him or simply play with him. So it turns out that I've been a, a, a president of AMWA since 2019, but I don't remember exactly how I got involved with AMWA in 2008 when I became faculty sponsor of the medical student branch at UAB. Uh, this, is, uh, this is one of the activities that the students participated in, this Woven Word uh, Healthcare Quilt Project in 2009. I helped them very little uh, to put a three annual Little Red Dress parties to benefit a charity of the students' choices. So throughout, during those years, 2008, 2013, when I didn't hear from them anymore, um, AMWA at UAB was mostly uh, led by medical students uh, with a little bit of help from myself. In 2015, I see that Lauren is in this group. Lauren brought uh, uh, I am a chapter back to UAB as a faculty member activity. So I'm very thankful to Lauren. She's uh, um, um, one of the faculty members in the Department of Emergency Medicine. And, uh, and these are two stories that were in the UAB reporter, Lauren presenting, Dr. Fouad introduced her and uh, the, the, there were more than 40 people in the boardroom. I, Remember going there and getting excited that we would have more AMWA activity uh, starting then. So Lauren and I held, worked with the medical students to uh, host what's called what was called the regional AMWA uh, um, meeting for the medical students. So UAB belongs to Region Five that comprises medical schools in Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, Louisiana, Puerto Rico, and other international programs in the Caribbean. Caribbean region. So we had a really good time. This is a picture I took uh, at the edge of chaos. This is not exactly at the uh, in the Alabama theater, but this is a picture of the, one of the walls there. We had plenary sessions, we had mentorship, but we had sessions on mentorship, we had abstract presentations. It was um, a Friday and Saturday program, mostly geared to students. We also had a um, 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 silent auction. Uh, a year later, we thought that we should in, um, expand our, our meeting and, uh, and start on Friday afternoon with a, with a session at this, in the Spain Auditorium with uh, for more for faculty members. So Sandy Frazier, who I believe is also here today, um, and, uh, and Ashita Tolwani talked to faculty members on Friday morning, uh, uh, followed by another networking event with the students and faculty members that evening. And then Saturday, uh, again, at the edge of chaos, we had uh, several sessions and the two picture, the two group pictures on the right are uh, several of our trainees at the time that uh, um, had a, a workshop with the uh, students. It was very uh, well attended and students from as far as Puerto Rico um, uh, participated and, uh, and were very excited to, to be here. So this was, uh, this was February, 2019. I became president uh, uh, when Lauren could not uh, uh, continue her commitment. She and I uh, helped um, uh, support a blood drive on this day, August 14th, four years ago. Uh, we both donated blood at um, a blood drive. It's something we haven't done since uh, the COVID pandemic affected it some, but it's an idea to do more uh, in the future. So uh, this picture was after both of us donated blood that day. So the very first activity I did as a, as a um, president in 2019 was to help the students put together this um, uh, lunch and learn diversity panel. They asked uh, that, uh, that faculty, women faculty members with different backgrounds participated. And I was lucky to have uh, Huma Fatima from our department, Devika Das from HEME, um, um, Pilar Acosta Lara from Medicine, and Kenesha um, uh, Kirksey from PMNR to participate. Uh, you all recognize this is uh, uh, Volker Hall. And uh, this was the picture when I, that I'm 
Yeah, st that were standing is uh, at, was at the end, and then they, they, they were sitting here in front of the students. Um, at that point, uh, we, they dis also discussed uh, a mentorship program that um, I have somewhat helped them um, throughout the years. Um, honestly, uh, it's been mostly led by them, but I have to um, thank all the chairs and, uh, and many, many uh, faculty members that have volunteered to mentor students that were interested in, in, being, um, uh, in, in, in pursuing those specialties. So uh, throughout, the, throughout these years, there have been several, um, uh, uh, several uh, emails and communications back and forth between uh, the students and faculty members. I don't honestly have uh, a, a good um, grasp on how, much, how well that program went because uh, I didn't uh, stay uh, as connected, but anytime they asked me to um, help them reach out to some groups of uh, physicians or specialties, um, I did so. And the faculty and the chairs of those departments were all very, very um, supportive and, uh, and provided uh, uh, guidance as to who could be interested, or simply I emailed a lot of different faculty members about it. Uh, let's see, this, this slide is not moving. Okay, so uh, from now on, we're going to talk mostly about the sessions we did for the faculty members, which was what I spent most uh, time with. So uh, little we knew that, the, that there was a pandemic uh, in the horizon when we had this first uh, session that I would um, call blockbuster session. So uh, on October 8th, 2019, in the boardroom, which was field, um, I invited five different amazing physicians to represent uh, uh, um, the ones that have come to UAB as young faculty members, sometimes students, uh, some, uh, some residents, and have had have but even by that point, have or had already reached uh, very uh, it's important positions like Sherry Cannon as chair of radiology, started as a resident. Dr. Fuad came here and started her career at UAB. Alice came as a resident. Jamie came as a, a young faculty member. Lisa, I believe, came as a resident in medicine. I, I'm sorry, Lisa, I think you were actually a medical student here. Help me. Correct me. You were right. Yeah, I see. I yeah. So my goal with this session uh, was uh, to remind people that you don't have to leave a pl the place where you train or the place you start to, re to be all you can be. Pretty much uh, all of these women have been here for 10 years or more. Recently, we had a, a, a new a news um, one of the emails that we receive about about uh, uh, um, uh, uh, people that like years of years of service. I'm sorry, couldn't think of it. Um, uh, Jamie just completed ten years of service at UAB, and uh, of course, we know she's in charge of the of the transplant program, and he, she has a lot of other roles. Well, she came here as an assistant professor, and she's the last one that arrived. I'm happy to say that all of them are still here. This was four years ago, um, and, uh, and, and we're very lucky to have them here. But uh, I've, as, as, as many of you uh, probably feel the same, I think uh, retention of uh, talent is an important effort that we should all try to um, focus on. I, uh, I have seen a lot of people come and go, and I'm afraid that some young ones still think that unless you move to a bigger and better place, you're not able to be nationally recognized or even internationally recognized. And uh, in this session was to remind them and uh, that that's not the case. You can, you can be very, very, uh, you can accomplish anything you want in your career, even if you yeah, remain in the same place. So. Here I am again, making the same claim to the ones that are in this group, because I'm sure that there may be some still thinking uh, that way. 
Following that session in October 2019, we had a session uh, with Michelle Kong. I, I read uh, something in one of the UAB synopsis about her incredible community efforts. Um, so she uh, uh, she she uh, she agreed to give a session. And say, is it possible to do it all? Considering that she's also a very busy uh, um, clinical doctor as well as researcher. Following that, in February 2020, um, one thing that we still deal with is uh, imposter syndrome. So uh, Erin Contrato and Leslie Evan had uh, had been talking about that at the in the Department of Medicine, and uh, and she, they gave uh, another great la la live session at the, in the boardroom in February of 2020. This, this is one of the slides that they showed. And I thought it was interesting, um, not only for what it says, that imposter syndrome is an internal experience of intellectual phoniness, which appears to be particularly prevalent and intense among, among a select sample of high achieving women. Very interesting. But uh, also the fact that this was written in 1978, which was 45 years ago. So if anybody thinks that perhaps this is a new phenomenon, it's not, and perhaps we should be getting ready to get rid of it, but unfortunately it's still with us. In February of 2020, our uh, students had the opportunity to go uh, to, well, our, the, regional, the Region 5 meeting of AMWA took place in Puerto Rico. So our students were trying to go to that and the students there asked me if we could send some of our faculty members to speak. So thanks to Dr. Herbert Chan, Chair of Surgery, he, uh, um, he funded two great uh, colleagues, Vanessa Lindemann and Brittany Corey, who volunteered to go. Vanessa talked about stress management and resilience. Brittany talked about infertility and female physicians. They were both very hot topics, very well received. And uh, later on, they spoke, they, they gave those sessions to us, but I wanted to point out the support that Dr. Chen had. All, most, many chairs said they would support someone to go, but the first people that volunteered were these two. So they did go to Puerto Rico and had a great experience right before the pandemic um, struck. So March, 2020, I don't have to remind everybody what happened. The, the picture at the top is from the web. The, the New York subway was empty. The picture at the bottom is one I took uh, when I was coming to work one morning. And at nine o'clock in the morning, the bridge on over um, between uh, Spain Wall, between uh, Jefferson Towers and Spain Wallace was empty. So suddenly I had plans for a session in April of 2020 and, uh, and we just couldn't, didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, most of the, if I remember correctly, which I, I kind of do, uh, I, uh, I had no idea how long the lockdown would happen. And I thought, well, if we can't do a session, we can have a, a live session in April, we'll have one in, May, uh, it will it will it will uh, op open up before we know. Of course, that's not that was not the case. So the next person I want to thank is Evelyn Jones. Evelyn Jones used to work at at the ODI at that time. So Evelyn sent me a message um, in April of 2020, saying, "What do you think of having a Zoom meeting?" Um, sponsored by AMWA with two local um, great consultants called Julie McDonald and Lisa Graham, who are shown in the picture here, um, who have who vol will volunteer to give us a, a, a free session and, uh, and will help us stay together despite, uh, despite the pandemic. So they chose this very uh, cute uh, um, title, Put your own mask on first, self-care in the time of COVID-19. Everybody was very unsure as to what to do. A lot of people were wondering how um, their sanity was going to survive the pandemic. So Lisa and Julie did a wonderful job uh, and it was a very well attended session. And, uh, and it showed us that there was 
perhaps a way out of the pandemic. So here's Hugo again. Hugo made me think, maybe this is what we should be doing. Zoom meetings are not live sessions, but they are, they could be the silver lining of this, of the pandemic. So from August 2020, so it took me until August to organize something until May of this year, we had 25 Zoom sessions, despite the fact that we open up and we have now have live sessions. I, I suspect that mo many of the people that are here today would not be able to come to the boardroom and attend a live session because you're in different buildings, you have a very tight schedule. Um, the, throughout these, the, these three years, there were people joining from Tuscaloosa, from Huntsville, from uh, other states. Um, I realized uh, with conversations with multiple other people that the Zoom sessions actually brought up um, the ability to reach more people and selfishly speaking, in a way, it made it a lot easier to plan. When we had live sessions, we had to plan, we had to uh, um, estimate how many people would show up so we would have the right size room. We wouldn't have a room that was too crowded or too empty. We had enough, uh, we, we had to have enough number of lunches because Dr. Fuad's office would pay for lunches, but sometimes we had lots of leftover other times we didn't have enough on zoom suggestion for the next person we don't have to worry about that and any more people join us so what i did what i'm going to do from now on is to divide is to review the sessions in the four different uh, categories as they came out honestly i did not think of i didn't plan this ahead of time i just kept organizing or, or putting sessions together that um, came to mind as hot topics or something I read that I thought would be useful sharing or uh, some other events that I will uh, review uh, in a minute. Um, the, the, I'll talk a little bit more about the green, which is not even uh, uh, listed at the bottom. So overall of the 25 Zoom sessions, the most common one we had was in terms of career advice. And here I'm gonna, before I show them those, I want to uh, acknowledge Sandy Frazier. So Sandy, uh, right at the beginning of my uh, role as president, reminded me that we have amazing women at UAB and we should be highlighting them more than it, trying to invite people from other places. So Sandy, I really appreciate that because that was what I tried to do most of the time with very few um, um, exceptions. You're absolutely right. There, were, there are plenty of people here to, to be speakers and there are many more that, that the, the, the future of AMR should could uh, highlight. So the session on performance has to do with my love of theater. I started attending UAB theater about four years ago, and I have been to most of their performances since then. Dennis McLernan is the head of performance, and this picture is one of is that of the uh, SpongeBob show that I that, that they did uh, about I think about two years ago. The point of this session in April 2021 was that I thought that we were going to start having many more live sessions with our own students and, and trainees in general. So I had just been to a session at the theater and I thought it's a performance and we have not been doing it for at least a year. We have been locked down. So let's talk about how we should perform in front of people from somebody that is not exactly the person we normally learn from, a head of theater performance. Uh, as we all know, we didn't quite open up right away after April 2021, and then at the end of 2021, we had the Delta, um, the, the, the worsening of the pandemic, but in any case, that was a quite a, a, a different session, and, uh, and I thought I would get that out of the way right away. So in terms of career advice, the first two 
that happened in November of 2020 and January of 2021 uh, were based on uh, publications. So uh, every time I came, uh, every time I came up with a paper that uh, was either written by someone at UAB, like the first one, the one in November 2021, called "Turning Shoots into Ladders: A Review and Roadmap for Gender and Equity in Academia," or one that I found in uh, a little bit later uh, in the American Journal of Medicine on 10 Ways to Empower Yourself as a Woman in Science and Academic Medicine." So I invited people to discuss that in those session, the, the, those topics. Obviously, the, the speakers on the November 20th were the authors of the paper, and they were very, very uh, uh, entertaining and, and informational. In January of 2021, uh, for the 10 ways to empower, empower yourself as a woman, I tried to get 10 different women that had been uh, um, recently promoted to professor. Shuku, Michelle, Cherie, and Jamie had just been um, uh, promoted to professor the, the previous, uh, previous year, previous October, October 2020. Unfortunately, the others could not do it the day that I uh, require, requested or they were just not interested. So I ended up joining them and each one of them, uh, each one of us took uh, two of the suggested uh, ways to empower yourself. It was, it was a very dynamic session and everybody shared their, uh, their um, 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 personal stories that related to, these, uh, to, to this topic. In June of 2021, uh, as part of the end of the academic, um, of, of an academic year, I invited Brandy, from our department, Kirsten, Rachel, and Erin Delaney to discuss what um, uh, their to their um, to, for them to reminisce what they would what they think they would have done differently if they knew back in medical school and residency what they knew now that they are faculty members in at UAB and it was also a very useful um, um, session. 2021 and 2023, there were uh, several different uh, um, sessions on, um, on promotions, on the momentum program that Jeanette Larson organizes. We had two sessions on parental leave. Um, the first one was sparked by a paper that Sherry Cannon, Kirsten, and others from the Department of um, Radiology, like Aparna and Anna, they, wrote, they had written that this paper called Navigating Parental Leave as a Leader. So uh, I'm, we're going to talk more about that um, later. Uh, Leslie and Jory uh, um, followed that discussion in March with a session on parental leave at UAB. Is that part two? Sorry, I, I don't. Um, and... Um, Later, later in the year in 2022, people from several people from different departments, um, Jory again, Lisa uh, Willett again, uh, talked about mentoring women. And uh, on that session, we had uh, a medical student, Nikki Panzika, who was the president of the medical student chapter at the time. And uh, as I mentioned, there were a couple of non, uh, very few non-UAB people. So Paula Ferrada is a, is a very well accomplished trauma surgeon that was a visiting professor in our trauma um, um, section at UAB. I invited her to get to give a talk in February of 2022, 2023. So these were our sessions that uh, uh, um, were meant for career advice. We also had seven sessions on career highlights. So some of, these are some of my favorite ones, I guess, because I asked people to um, show off. So most, most women have a hard time boasting and, uh, and telling people what they, what they did or, uh, or, or how well they've done. So um, in, uh, in these two parts, one and two session, experience and advice from the Dean's Excellence Award winners, I asked the speakers, were all listed there to describe what they were nominated for and then describe what else they've done that they could have been nominated for. Um, it turns out that um, that year, 20, uh, 2022, 
uh, a record number of women received uh, uh, the Dean's Excellence Award, 13 of 18, which was 72%. This year, it, got, it went down a little bit, but hopefully in the future, we will improve again. Uh, com compare that with the previous the years before 2022, only 61% uh, or 11 of 18 uh, recipients of the award were women in 2021 and 69% in 2020. So uh, I thought it was fitting to invite them uh, to speak uh, um, in, and we divided into sessions. For the last three sessions on career highlights in, uh, in 2022 and 2023, I, ch I uh, sent emails to all the clinical chairs, or actually all the, uh, all the School of Medicine chairs, and I asked them to get, send me names of women that were doing in um, incredible things in their departments. I received a lot of different nominations. Not everybody agreed or was able to participate, but as you can tell, uh, Jessica from um, surgery, Anna from genetics, Carly from medicine. I invited a man, Gora, uh, Goyle from medicine, because I had attended one of his grand rounds. It was incredible. Chandra from uh, pediatrics, Terry is also pediatrics. Uh, Rachel from uh, OB, Paul is from our department, and Andrea. They all shared incredible um, activities that they're involved with. Uh, for example, um, um, Gaurav started a, a clinic and a referral pr uh, program for a new, uh, for a uh, di rare disease called histiocytosis. Chandra has an incredible mini medical school program for uh, high school students. Terry has revolutionized how asthma is, is cared for at UAB. Jessica has done a lot of work in the Department of Surgery. Uh, Anna uh, uh, worked on the um, in in the um, in genetics department on genetic counseling. Carly is responsible for an, a very useful, um, very uh, well, uh, um, very efficient <laughs> uh, um, clinic uh, from for patients that are moving from one area to the other. Rachel, Paul, and Andrea working together on a maternal uh, maternal health. Uh, program and throughout the state of Alabama. So basically, all these amazing people that have worked together have um, have have achieved a lot of uh, success, but also have a lot of work ahead of them. And I felt that I am what could be a platform for them to share what they've done, share what they want to do, and include other people. I think I've heard for many different. Um, uh, individuals that they did, had no idea that someone was doing what they were and how much that was going to be interesting for them to co co uh, collaborate with, work together, and so on and so forth. So if nothing else, I think being a, a, a president of AMWA, uh, one of our responsibilities is to bring people together and, 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 and foster collaboration and uh, ultimately improve um, all of, our, our, of our, our lives and our careers. So uh, these sessions were also uh, geared towards a, a, an observation that I made and heard which is that colleagues of ours that are, go are mostly involved in service have a hard time on, um, envisioning how to put their uh, package together for promotion. Everybody feels that serving or being a clinician is their primary role, many of them, and uh, but they don't, quite know how to translate that into why they are deserving of promotion. So by, by showing them how many other people have succeeded and, be, and been promoted through, um, through clinical service, uh, I, it was, I, 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 I hope that I helped uh, um, so, so clarify how service and uh, uh, can be the, your area of excellence and uh, allow you to be uh, promoted to associate professor or even professor um, at UAB.
So I already showed you this slide. We also had four very well attended and very um, inspiring session on current topics. The first one is uh, in August 2020, unfortunately, uh, followed the, uh, um, the, the, the death of George Floyd in, uh, in May of that year. So uh, we discussed with, in one of the most uh, well attended Zoom session, how each of us can promote racial justice one encounter at a time. So uh, as you can see, Kenesha, Carla, Samantha, and KK, they represent uh, PMNR, medicine, and pediatrics. And uh, they all had uh, a lot of um, um, important things to say to all of us. Um, in September and November of 2021, Ginger Duncan, who was uh, in, uh, I think is in the audience, uh, pretty much uh, led our efforts to organize two sessions on transgender and, and, um, and, the, and on the healthcare of trans and gender uh, 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 individuals with uh, diverse identities, which was very well received and very important. Turns out that we have a gender health clinic at UAB, and I'm not sure that everyone knows. It's a, it's a very um, inter, interdisciplinary effort, uh, including uh, medicine, pediatrics, uh, um, psychology, and several other specialties. I thought I would put the number there just in case someone uh, may be interested. Just recently, I heard someone say they needed to refer a patient to this, to this clinic. And I said, well, I, I know how you can find them. Um, so thank you, Ginger, for helping me put that together. Um, it was very well uh, re received as well. And then our previous uh, um, president and, uh, and, um, and the person that brought AMA back to UAB, Lauren Walter, talked about another very, very um, current and uh, complicated uh, issue that we deal with, which is ch sex, gender, and the opioid epidemic. She also mentioned the fact that um, women and men respond differently to treatments and, uh, and, and even to the management of, um, of, the opio of opioid, uh, um, uh, um, of the opioid problem. And, uh, and it was a, a somewhat of a, sad um, uh, recognition of the issues that we're dealing with that are still not that well um, understood, except for by Lauren. Finally, we had personal talks. Um, I, uh, I already mentioned Vanessa and Brittany spoke at Puerto Rico in 2020. So we asked them to uh, share their um, insights into that. Um, and then I spoke uh, last year uh, about uh, about the fact that no matter who we are and how well how much we have accomplished, if uh, our titles uh, were um, um, academic ranking, we have all had setbacks, sometimes more than others. Um, and uh, so uh, my goal with that uh, session was to share the things I went through as an international medical graduate, as a woman, as a wife, as a mother, and, uh, and pretty much try to uh, remind people that uh, you can always overcome uh, whatever, whatever it is that comes to you and, uh, and just carry on. Um, I want to now uh, focus on uh, on 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 the acknowledgement on continue on the acknowledgement to uh, to remind everybody that AMWA that AMWA is is featured in our um, in our page of the Office for Diversity and Inclusion of our School of Medicine, right there on the on the left. And the fact that thanks to Jessica and Mary and. Uh, Early on, also Laura, the, the, these Zoom sessions were um, recorded, as this one is being recorded, and they can be found in, in that website. So uh, even though we are not able to sometimes have uh, uh, attend all the sessions we're interested in, 
most of the ones that I've spoken of are recorded. It's an amazing um, um, resource that I can only thank uh, Jessica and Mary for uh, putting together. So thank you. So again, so let's finish up with aspirations. So the first and foremost, the, Hugo is saying, hey, please, why don't you take the AMO presidency and take it to the next level? Grandma did all she could do, and she, now she wants to spend more time with me. So one thing that I didn't was not able to do, despite the fact that I was a, that I worked with the, all these amazing people, I didn't put their names because it would be too crowded. But from the top left all the way to the bottom, Jory May, Lisa Willett, Leslie Hayes, Sherry Cannon, Mona Fuad. Kim Hendershot, Christy Broman, and Holly Rich, Richter, and I tried to uh, expand the parental leave, paid parental leave at UAB. So it, it turns out that we have room for improvement. And we made together, we, together, we submitted this proposal to HR, uh, which was a joint effort for, for uh, with the women in medicine and the Department of Medicine, the women in surgery and our chapter of uh, AMR. Our proposal, our goal was to for UAB to become a leader in the support of faculty and staff with child rearing responsibilities, supporting the recruitment and retention of the highest quality talent to the organization and improving, improving employee well-being. For those of you that may not realize, our current, um, our current, uh, current state is that we, uh, uh, as, as employees of UAB, all of us, um, school of, uh, not, not just School of Medicine, not just faculty members, everyone falls under the same policy that there is a four week paid leave once you have completed one year of employment prior to eligibility. Well, thanks to Jory in particular, who did a lot of research, uh, she put together this table that you see at the bottom, comparing UAB with other institutions in terms of paid leave duration and eligibility based on employment duration. As you can see, several uh, places have great, great places, uh, uh, have longer duration and have no uh, um, um, minimum eligibility um, employment duration. So we made this proposal to HR. Uh, we met uh, on um, virtually and even in person one time with HR, and uh, and we're hoping that uh, that we would improve our proposal was to eliminate the, uh, the, um, the, um, the, the eligibility requirement and to increase the paid leave to 12 weeks. Honestly, we were trying, we were, hope, we were willing to, uh, to, to decrease the paid from 12 weeks to, to eight weeks, or even perhaps six weeks, uh, but we wanted to go for the for, for the best that we thought we, uh, we would be wonderful to both retain our current uh, incredible women and men, because this is parental leave, not just maternal leave, but also uh, recruit people that, uh, that would see this as a great uh, uh, offer from UAB. Unfortunately, we're not there yet, although we, we spent several months uh, um, putting it together and then submitting and having conversations with HR uh, in uh, May, in, in, uh, I mean, in March of, of this year, we heard back from uh, the new, uh, the new um, UAB uh, chief uh, HR officer, uh, Janet May, who's been in the post for less than two years, I believe. So um, appropriately, she uh, emailed uh, Jory and copied the rest of us because Jory was our leader in this effort, hopefully still is. And, uh, and uh, she said, I wanted to follow back with you on the discussion regarding paid parental leave at the benefits committee meeting. 
turned out that in March, there was a change in the city of Birmingham's new paid parental leave policy. We were hoping that that would in, improve our chances of changing the UAB's policy. Unfortunately, according to Janet, the committee decided it would continue to review the benefit on a periodic basis, but at this time did not recommend any changes to the policy. Jory asked if there was, if it would be helpful for us to continue to inquire and how often the, the periodic basis uh, meant. And uh, the answer was, uh, we'll continue to do, um, uh, we will reach back up. So this is where we are. So we're not there yet. It's perhaps one of my biggest aspirations for, for the future of AMWA is that we will improve the, the, the current state, status of the paid parental leave at UAB. With that, um, since we're in Alabama and we are very proud of being in this from the same state as Helen Keller, I thought this uh, was pretty fitting. Do not think of today's failures, but of the success that may come tomorrow, so hopefully. Also, today is uh, um, Nelson Mandela's birthday. Today is also my youngest son's birthday, so that's why I know Nelson Mandela's birthday is today as well. He would be 105, 105 years old. And he said, remember that hope is a powerful weapon, even when all else is lost. I don't think all is lost in terms of the in the parental leave, but as of right now, we don't have any evidence that anything will change anytime soon. So um, again, uh, the next person hopefully will continue working with that incredible group of people. And finally, I want to acknowledge all the people that participated in this uh, in, in, in these sessions at AMWA. Thanks to my amazing uh, assistant, uh, Jasper Kazaya, she put together this very uh, impressive uh, uh, program where we are uh, listing the names of all the people that, uh, that uh, participated, as you can see, from medical students to uh, a, a dean like like Dr. Fawad and a lot of different people in between. All I can say is thank you, thank you, thank you. So this is my last slide. Thank you so much. Oh, Marissa, this is outstanding. You know, I got out of breath. You know, like just listing all the things that you accomplished, and I know that you've done all this. Um, voluntarily out of your heart and your passion for, you have to have the passion to be able to accomplish all this uh, and do this uh, in addition to um, what you have done. Um, and we really, really wanna thank you for all your dedication yep. and all your work with AMWA. And I'm hoping that um, you at least, you know, like no matter if you're, um, uh, if you're in Birmingham or LA, you can connect to our MOA sessions and, and participate with us. Um, and again, um, really, I would welcome any of, the, of you or if you know someone that um, wants to uh, follow the lead of Marissa and be the president. Uh, we can also entertain uh, a co-president, so the the burden is not just on one person. And our office really uh, is willing to support all the logistics. Um, and uh, there is a lot of things that we could do through AMWA to serve also in addition to the sessions uh, to serve the women uh, of UAB Medicine. Um, uh, you know, like to make it a, a good environment for them to to work. So um, please email me if you are interested or if you know somebody could be interested. Um, and this is something that um, really before Lauren and I really appreciate Lauren Walter, she came to me and Evelyn said, I wanna do this. And, uh, and I really appreciate her initiative because, uh, really MO chapter did not exist here, you know, like we had some, but it just died. It's only the students that they were active, mm -hmm. but we don't want it to die. We, this is very important for us. Right, 
Absolutely. Thank uh, you. I didn't know if anyone has any question to Marissa, either what you're going to do with your time leaving, but uh, <laughs> any anyone wants to say anything before we close? So there are a lot in the chat to say thank you and how amazing you are. And um, um, so uh, again, we we wish you all the best in your retirement and thank you again uh, for, for your leadership. Thank you, Marissa. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.